at this. This is like a buffet right here. This is what's called reindeer moss. I'd rather have the reindeer. We're all hungry, and moss is not my idea of a meal. It's 90% carbs. I mean, that's more than a potato by weight. Creek's really good at trying to uh, keep a positive note on everything, but if I want to eat what the reindeer eats, I'll get that when I eat the reindeer. Boy, there's enough we can even come back for seconds. For thousands of years, man lived wild, and our triumph over Mother Nature defined who we were. We were rugged, we were strong, and as we evolved, our ingenuity led to towering achievements. We secured our place at the top of the food chain, and now we have the waistline to prove it. I'm Creek Stewart. I'm a survivalist, and this is your midlife wake-up call. So get off the couch and come out to the woods. If you can survive a week with me, you can take on anything. Survival is simple, just don't die. In our not so distant past, pioneer settlers moved into areas and literally carved out an existence for themselves with very limited supplies. Three guys who I've never met are gonna do the same thing this week. We are gonna survive here in the middle of the Tennessee woods with very limited tools and resources. I'll tell you what, boys, I ain't seen no damn beef burrito bushes growing anywhere. Mexican junkie, man. Yeah, but you don't want that because you don't have a toilet for afterwards. That's right. Since pioneer days, our survival skills have become soft. I'm not even a tent camper. Now a no-tent camper would uh, be interesting to say the least. David Howard used to be in the Army, but now he spends most of his time behind a desk as an IT guy, and he's 50 pounds overweight. He's come to the woods to get back in touch with that soldier that he knows is still inside of him. Looks like we've got a drill instructor with a ponytail. Bill Anderson has recently quit his job. I want to learn to be self-sufficient. And plans on moving his family off the grid. Being able to sustain and take care of your family, that's my motivation. He's looking at this week as the kickoff to an entirely brand new chapter of his life. All right, Andrew Walker. Andrew Walker is a workaholic. But with that hard work, he hasn't had time to enjoy the fruits of his labor. He makes it worth coming home every night after a nice, long, stressful day. Andrew's come for what he calls a mental reset. Welcome to the edge of the wilderness, gentlemen. This week, we are pioneer settlers, and we're going to reclaim some of those pioneer survival skills. We've got each of you a backpack. First item is a stainless steel canteen and mug. You've got one liter of fresh drinking water. If you have a survival knife, you'll be using this knife for all kinds of things. Blaze orange, so that if you drop it in the woods, you can see it. This week, guys, get a hatchet. All right. You know, pioneer style. And that's it, fellas. This is going to be an incredibly difficult week that's gonna test all of us on a lot of different levels. For the first four days, we're gonna be working together as a team. On the fifth day, you'll be striking out solo. But for now, today, our main priorities are shelter and fire. You guys ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. ready. All right, good. Let's get going. Many people called me crazy when I told them I was doing this. I've never really truly had to rough it before. So guys, we're looking for a good shelter spot. This is a little low. You know, you can see how wet this dirt is. We've got to find a drier spot, you know, especially if it's wet now on a sunny day. Imagine if it rains, you know, it's just going to be soaking. I mean, it is an absolutely beautiful day here in the Great Smoky Mountains, but the weather can change in a matter of hours. So we need to find a shelter location that's dry. Even though we're trying to find a base camp, we're always looking for other stuff too, you know? All I'm seeing are dead brown leaves. Yeah, that's the truth, man. That's the thing about this time of year. There is not much to eat. I think I just pulled my butt cheek stepping over that log. I'm an IT guy by day, which to me, I sit on my butt an awful lot. Uh-oh, I tripped and fell back and the knife fell out. You lost your knife? I don't feel it in my coat anyway. So we're five minutes into our initial hike, and Dave has already lost his knife. He's not in the coat. All right, you're going to be the first to die. That's so right. we eat him. All right, man. That's right. 
The whole point of these bright orange knives is so that they wouldn't lose them. Might be that first log he had to step over where I pulled my butt cheek. Luckily, we found it. Dude, I'm the oldest one here, and I'm certainly not gonna be the one that's being carried off. You have to kill me to get me to do that. Check this out. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Pioneers establishing a homestead literally in the middle of nowhere. In our search for the perfect base camp location, we happen upon these two huge chimneys. They're remnants of a pioneer homestead from who knows how many years ago. Now this is the oddest thing here. This is not a native species to this woods at all. This is yucca. Bill, you're from Texas. Yeah. You know what yucca is. We have plenty of it. They have somehow gotten their hands on yucca back in the 1800s, and this is going to be a huge resource to us. I want you guys cut off some of these leaves, because this is right here is a perfect opportunity for some cordage. For years, I've seen the plant one way, and now I'm looking at it completely different. These dried flower stalks of the yucca plant make amazing fire starting materials. My wife and I just recently sold our house because we're wanting to try and start an off the grid lifestyle of not being dependent on the city for electricity and for water and being able to more provide for ourselves. So this is gonna jump start and kind of kick start it. Thanks, pioneers. Everybody get some cord. <laughs> Dave, you got some cord. That's right. <laughs> I'm flying my flag. Awesome. <laughs> my yucca flag. Bill the mountain man. This is a cool area. I love pine, man. I'm a sucker for a pine grove, man, you know. Got a lot of resources here. It's dry, it's flat. We're on like our own little secluded plateau. I love this. So first things first, we need to clean up some of these poles. My idea is to make a freestanding A-frame shelter. Try to lock that in there somewhere. Then we're gonna put rafters on that A-frame. Perfect, dude, that's an awesome one. We're gonna cover the roof with pine needles, and then we're gonna fill the inside with pine needles as well so that we have insulation from the cold ground. What I would give for a rake right now. It's gonna make a really good and waterproof shelter for us this week. Good job on shelter, but it's only 50% of the equation for staying warm tonight. Right now, we have to move to fire. And with only maybe an hour and a half of daylight left, I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't a little concerned because the fire method that I have in mind is the most difficult fire start on planet Earth. We're gonna make a fire with hand drill. Doesn't get any more difficult than taking your hands and rubbing two sticks together to create an ember and then blow in the flame. My hands hurt already. Yeah, get ready to get blisters, suckers. Spinning a stick with your bare hands and making fire like a caveman separates the men from the boys, even in the survival business. We need to make the spindle for our hand drill. Round that off like the end of a hot dog. I just wanna know why they gotta keep talking about food when we haven't even discussed how we're doing that yet. In a hand drill scenario, it's hard to apply the downward pressure necessary and the speed to get that to start charring and smoking and creating the dust we need. I've slightly modified the hand drill today with yucca cordage that I've reverse wrapped in order to pull down on that hand drill and apply pressure so that all these guys have to think about is spinning that drill. All right, who's going first? All right, I'll go first. It is intimidating to know that not many people are successful with it, and here we are tonight, you know, setting the stage for the rest of our week. You smell it. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and carve our notch. And this notch is to collect that dust so that it can reach the temperature necessary to create that burning ember. The sun is going down and the, the temperature is dropping quite a bit here. Go faster. We're tired, we're hungry, we're thirsty. I'm serious, man. Right now, go faster. So I think the nerves are starting to set in a little bit about the, the possibility that we may not have fire tonight. Can we swap out? Yeah, yeah. Hurry, hurry. It's tough, man. Okay, I think we're through. We didn't get it. That's brutal, guys. Yeah. You know, this is one of the moments this week where you have to decide why you came here, and you gotta channel all of that energy and all of that motivation into this one task, because right now, there is no future this week unless we get fire, and that's the truth.
Okay, I think we're through. We didn't get it. This is the most difficult fire start on planet Earth, hands down. Take number two, you've got to pour it on, man. Like, every bit of what you've got inside of you, you've got to dump into that spindle. For us to attempt this today as our only fire option in the middle of the Great Smoky Mountains, which are damp and moist. You gotta go faster. Oh, man. Stay in. This is a challenge. You got the smoke. Damn it. Okay, hold on. Just, just take a breath. We gotta start a third. Guys, if we don't get this tonight, our only other option is spooning. <laughs> I've spent many nights in the woods where I could not get a friction fire going. Getting a fire is a luxury and certainly not a guarantee. In my experience, guys, after the third attempt of trying to get an ember, your chances go way down, primarily because you're just exhausted. But tonight, we have it. I believe that they can do it. Okay. Good. Beautiful. Nice and straight. Okay, take it. We won't burn it through. Get it. As fast as you can go. Andrew, tap into whatever freaking brought you here, brother. The reason that I did come out here was to get time for me. Can you go faster, Andrew? If you can do it. I don't have the option to check my emails, to check my voicemails. It is Andrew surviving for Andrew out here. Go. Go it. Smoke. You got it. It's on the it's on the it's You got on. it. The ember's out. Protect it from the wind. Watch what I'm doing here, Dave. Taking this, putting that huge, fat ember right down in that little hole. Get a hold of it right here. Now blow into it. Nice and gentle. There it goes. Okay. Ouch. There we go. Good. Give it a little bit of air there, Bill. A little bit more. Hell yeah. Freaking A, brother. <laughs> we have fire, man. Going to creek is the hardest thing to do in, in, in this world of survival. And if we accomplish that, we damn sure better not fail at anything else. That's exciting. I've never been so excited about fire in my life. <laughs> it's going to be nice tonight when we're in that shelter. Yep. The idea is actually spooning with those guys was was not a good idea, and I'm very glad we got the fire. We just got to keep this baby going all night long. Bill, start sure. getting some wood. That's right. Bill, you, Bill, you're on fire watch tonight. That's right. Not a problem. Oh, it's raining. Yes, it is. If it was raining a little harder, we could fill up our water bottles with the rain, man, but it just didn't come down enough. I think we need to still strike out this morning and look for a stable water source. You know, guys, it's getting awful mushy right here. Oh, wow, man, check that out. Oh, dude, that's what we're looking for, man. You know, back in the day for fresh water, Pioneers would develop what's called a spring head, man, where the water comes right out of the mountain. I'm not 100% positive that this water is safe to drink, so we're going to gather it and boil it back at camp because we have fire. If we didn't have fire, I might be willing to risk it because it is coming, like, right out of the side of the mountain. So I'm going to get in here, and I'll dig it out, see if we can just lay the thermos down in it and collect it that way. There's enough water coming out, man. I think it should flush your hole out pretty quick. <laughs> It's all about flushing out the hole now, ain't it? It looks pretty tasty, man. Look how quick it's clearing out. Yeah. What are the main things that you can find in water out here that are going to make you sick? It's not the bacteria that kills you. It's diarrhea. How could that potentially kill me out here? So many people die of diarrhea because it results in dehydration. We always take for granted that luxury, turning on a tap, going to the fridge, grabbing a bottle of water. Uh, but you see how hard these people had to work out here just to get a steady water source. And luckily, it was a good one. They did it well because it's still there for us hundreds of years later. I think we got water. Let's start trekking right. back to camp. Let's go. We need to put our water on boil. Finding the water was a huge deal for me. Uh, I drink a lot of fluid. Let's start getting some wood. Dinner, you just can't go. With all the extra energy that we're exerting out here. You don't have the calories to be doing that. Holy mackerel. There's been a couple times where I started feeling dry mouthed, and I know that's a sign of getting dehydrated. Did you just put it in the outside coals, Bill? Is that what you did? We're just going to have to now go and boil it and be able to make it drinkable. Unscrew it a little and get your lid off. Let it start boiling. Yeah. Just don't screw it down all the way because you don't want to melt the plastic. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. Or spill out my water. Spill it, yep. But you know, just as we get all that water, getting ready to get a boil and start drinking, I knocked Bill's water over. 
And I'm just sitting there thinking, now I gotta give up my water because it's my fault that he has none. That, that's demoralizing. We need to put our water on boil. Finding the water was a huge deal for me. Just don't screw it down all the way because you don't want to melt the plastic. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Or spill out my water. I'm just sitting there thinking, I knocked it all down right. so you can have mine. You going to get more? Yep. Well, I kind of have to now. This is exactly the type of stuff that happens when you're hungry, when you're frustrated, when you're cold, and when you're tired. Luckily, we did not depend on rainfall for water. We all just decided, you know, we're all just going to share a little bit of water, and we'll just go back and get more. Let's go. I'm getting hungry, boss. These guys need calories. So we're going to go back to the water source, and then we're going to strike out, and we're going to forage for wild edibles. All right, guys, you want to keep moving? Mosey. Yeah, let's find some food now. Yeah, man, let's really keep our eyes peeled. That's creepy looking. Creepy is a good word. Yeah, seriously, man. This area is so cool here in the Great Smoky Mountains. There is literally the remnants of a pioneer house. It's dilapidated, it's dangerous, it's not worth going in and looking for resources, but it's crazy to think that this is a home where someone lived in the middle of nowhere. This is probably where their field was. It's not much, but one thing I am seeing, that these are actually rose hips. Please don't tell me that's what we're supposed to eat. They don't have a lot of calories, but they contain a ton of vitamin C. I understand I'm not going to find a ribeye tree out here, but little bitty roseberries. We can make like a tea out of these. But what I'm thinking actually is, you know, these rose hips, these berries are perfect for bait. Everything will eat rose hips. Birds, rabbits, squirrel. Let's get to picking. Yeah, man. I'm wanting to eventually get to where I live off the grid. Now, looking at how these people live, I don't want to live that far off the grid. It's better be some good berry tea. I still want solar panel and I want well water, but this is giving me a whole new perspective on how people did it back then. I don't want to stand here for hours picking berries out of a thorn bush. In hopes of setting a trap that catches something to eat. I will never complain about long lines at fast food again. <laughs> All right, guys. We got enough rose hips, I think. Animals and birds are used to coming into these rose hips, so I think we should set our traps in the general vicinity of these wild roses. So we're gonna need some sticks. All of these pioneer settlement signs have kind of inspired me to build a log cabin style live capture trap. The way this is designed is we can make a cage that holds itself together with tension provided from these yucca ropes. Take this like this, then we're going to rotate it like this. Now we take these straight sticks and we work them to the ends. This is making me nuts because I'm OCD. I am not a hunter. I've never hunted. I've never killed anything besides bugs and stuff. But out here, if you, you don't find it, capture it, kill it, you're not going to eat. And our trip line is going to be made out of yucca. Tie these two pieces together. No matter what goes in there, there's no way they're getting over or under that trip line. You come in here, you cross that trip line, you break that trigger. Pretty awesome. It didn't take any tools to even build. Now, we just need to make a couple more of these traps. Well, man, forget all y'all's little traps gonna catch a bird. I'm catching a damn pig. I built me a Texas-sized trap. That's a Texas-sized <laughs> cage or a Texas-sized dinner, brother. Start trekking right. back to camp. Let's go. Home sweet home. Well, I'm really starting to see my breath. Now that we're back at camp, it's time for dinner. And this is going to be a feast. Rose hip tea. I'm setting mine away from all of y'all. <laughs> it's not going to fill any of us up, but at least it's something warm in our belly. One thing about rose hips, though, is uh, you don't want to eat them, you know, because on the inside of them, they are filled with these itchy little fibers. When you were a kid, did you ever buy itching powder from like a novelty shop? Yeah, let's get the lid of your mom's baby powder and sprinkle it in. Yeah, exactly. Commercially sold itching powder is rosehip fibers inside. That's why you don't want to eat them. They make your throat itch like crazy. Has anybody got a bandana that they're not personally attached to? Yep. You care if we cut it up, dude? 
Not at all. This will make a perfect little tea bag. Wrap up some of those rose hips and then kind of pound it a little bit, break up that flesh, and then that gets kind of dipped into our mugs of steaming water. We're not getting a lot of calories out of the berries, but we're still getting some nutrition and vitamin C, and especially if you're out in the elements like we are, vitamin C can't hurt, so bottoms up on the berry tea. Tea time in the shelter? Yeah. Come on, ladies. Oh, God. Man, I did not climb my way to the top of the food chain to drink this for dinner. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> bottoms up. Here's the yeah. So now the rain's looking like it's about to set in. We're cold, we're tired, we're hungry. There's still a lot of hard work for some berries. I'm just hoping tomorrow when we go check those traps that there's going to be something in them. That's like bandana flavored tea. Bandana flavored tea. <laughs> yep. With a hint of rose. <laughs> All I did was rain last time, man. Oh, dude, it poured all night long, man. I'm damp. I'm damp to the bone. Day number three, morale is a little low. I'm glad it's daytime, man. That's all I'm going to say. Nights are rough. This morning, we're cold, we're tired, we're damp, and we're hungry. Long nights make you tired like that. They drain you, but possibility of food excites you, man. So, yeah, I know. The best thing we can do today is get moving. Let's pack up and go check our traps. Sounds good. Oh, man, I hope we got something in these. Yeah, man. I'm hungry. Dude, we got one down. Oh, yeah. I don't see anything in there, though. I can't oh, tell. Oh, man. No, it looks like the weather just tripped there. it last night. Well, we could reset it. Yeah, let's reset it for sure. Man, I was pretty dejected to see that there was nothing inside there. We still have a couple more to go, but... No, this was just the hog trap. We still got two more traps. Let's head and check the others. Looks like they're still set. Yeah. So this is a letdown. Nobody wants to panic outwardly, I think, and, and worry about, you know, do we have something to eat to get us through these next few days? You know, it's, it's, it's tough. The animals agree with me. Rose hips suck. <sighs> no. The animals love rose hips, man. They just, you know, that rain worked to our disadvantage. You know, they just bedding down. I think there was, you know, a sense of relief that I wouldn't be killing something today because I'm quite the animal lover. But if it got to the point to where I was life or death, things would change. You know, the fact of the matter is, is you can go for three weeks without food at all. So we're not going to die. It's just going to be uncomfortable. That doesn't sound good. We'll come back in the morning and see if there's anything here then. But uh, today... We have to kind of lower our expectations on what we want to eat. Eyes peeled, fellas. If anything looks edible, ask me. Military line of sight, everybody takes the opposite angle, man. You don't miss nothing. You know, being in the military, I had that drive to survive. And, you know, even though it's tough out here and it's been cold now and rainy, man, I just don't see a single track, nothing. No sense to get out of this weather. The reality is, is I'm not quitting, and I don't think any of my teammates are quitting. Look at this. Moss. This is like a buffet right here. This is what's called reindeer moss. I'd rather have the reindeer. I gotta be honest with you, rose hips and moss is not my idea of a meal. I can't promise it tastes good, but it is fairly nutritious. I mean, every animal in the Arctic areas in the northern woods eats this stuff in the winter. Creek's really good at trying to uh, keep a positive note on everything, but if I want to eat what the reindeer eats, I'll get that when I eat the reindeer. And then look around. I mean, there's a ton of it all over the place. Yeah, we can come back for seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you can't pigeonhole yourself into thinking that we're only going to eat meat this week, Bill. It's something. It's 90% carbs. I mean, that's more than a potato by weight. Wow. I mean, the other guys are seeming optimistic. I'm, I'm going to be optimistic. It's still putting something in my system. And we can also use this to scrub our pots after we're done. <laughs> I mean, we're burning the calories out here. I'm just, I'm still not looking forward to it. I tell you what, guys, I'm cold anyway. Yeah. Why don't we head back to camp, warm up, boil up some of this reindeer moss, and reserve our energy and hope for something in those traps in the morning. Sounds good to me. Well, guys, this isn't the type of wild edible where you just pick and eat it. 
It's actually really acidic, so if we just eat it, it's gonna hurt our stomachs. So we gotta kinda leach all those acids out. The best way to do that is boiling water and a little bit of wood ash. What kind of material is this stuff? The only thing I'm allergic to is mushrooms. You're allergic to mushrooms? I am. Well, I'll be honest with you, man. This moss is a lichen, and so it's two organisms together. It's algae and fungus. That's the only thing I remember about mushrooms. I'm allergic to them, and they're fungus of some sort. I would say the risk of having an allergic reaction is definitely not worth the reward of what you're going to get from this stuff. I'll tell you what, since you're my boy, I still got some rose hips in my pocket. <laughs> and we got a bandana left. You can have some sweet rose hip tea. Quite frankly, I don't know how closely related reindeer moss and mushrooms are, but in the middle of the wilderness, you never want to take an uncalculated risk. We're gonna bring this to a boil. We're actually gonna put some of this wood ash in the first couple of changes. You know, the more you pile that in there, Creek, the, the less mm. I feel bad about not having any of it. <laughs> well, the ash is actually a good thing, man. It takes that acid out of there. Then we gotta strain this solution off, boil it all again, strain that solution off, boil it again in a fresh change of water, and then rinse it off, and then we can eat it. And now we wait. You wanna learn survival skills, man. This is a survival skill. You know, learning how to process something in the wilderness that doesn't look edible. We've got about probably a three or four hour process ahead of us. You have to dump that out, switch the water, boil it again, then switch that out, boil it again, and then it's finally edible. Boil number four? Yeah. I think we're good enough to give it a shot, man. The water's looking pretty clear. So what's the trick to this? Well, you don't drink the water. You just get a little piece off of there, Bill. You got ramen noodle style over there, man. It made it, it chopsticks. It's awesome. Not much of a flavor. There's no flavor at all. Sometimes survival food is not about taste. You're eating a kitchen sponge. That's what I was about to say. I feel like I'm eating a sponge. For everybody who's eating a kitchen sponge, they can... That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> It is about nutrients and calories. I'm sitting here drinking warm water, at least warm myself up a little bit, but you know, you're talking about carbs, man. I'm sorry you, you can't get any of this, man. The best thing we can do tonight is hunker down in the shelter. The rain is starting to move in. You all right? Yeah, it's cold. And tomorrow, I'm just hoping that something is in those traps. What's for breakfast, Andrew? Not reindeer moss. <sighs> uh, energy level today is definitely lower. You can definitely tell that we haven't had a solid meal in four days now. Temperature's better, at least. Yeah, it feels a little better. What well, do you say we get our stuff and head for the traps? Now let's get it done. Right on, yeah, man, let's head out. We are all hungry, tired, and exhausted. It's stiff getting off that cold run. Yeah. Moving into their solo day tomorrow, we really need something to come through in those traps because, quite frankly, I don't want to eat any more reindeer moss, and there is nothing else that I can find edible in this place. See one up. Yeah, looks yeah. like one's down, one up and one down. Yeah, looks like we got one down. Let's see. We got something, boys. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, we got something. There's a bird in there. We got a bird. First thing I noticed it was there was movement inside, so I got really excited. I mean, we, we had finally caught something to eat. Be careful. Don't scare it too much, man. We don't want it popping out. What is that? Looks like a little quail. Yeah. We got one shot to get this thing out of that trap. And these things are shifty little boogers. So let's game plan for a second. Bill, I know you've hunted before. I know you've killed before. Yeah, I've shot many a quail, but I'm yeah. shooting them up in the air. By the time I go pick them up, they're already dead. This is something completely different even for me. I know, Andrew, you really aren't keen on the idea. No, I'll do it. Well, I'll tell you what, Dave, there's only one way to kill this animal that is humane, and it's to cut its head off, mm -hmm. you know, in one clean sweep with that knife. It's a heck of a thing, brother. You know, I came out here to be able to make sure that that if the day ever came that I had to do this, that I could do it. So, Bill, are you reaching in? I'll reach in. I'm looking at our other two traps, and they're up. This is it, fellas. This is probably our only shot. We 
We got something, boys. We got a bird. There's only one way to kill this animal that is humane. I'll do it. So, Bill, are you reaching in? I'll reach in. Just get his head nice and secured. Just watch my finger. Yeah. And as hard as you can, Dave. There it is. It was over, dude. Yeah. It's just it's done. like that. Dave? Yeah. You all right, man? Yep. Yeah. You all right, dude? Yeah, man. It's gross. I was proud of Dave and, you know, for stepping up and doing it. It wasn't something I think I could have done, so, you know, definitely props to him for doing it. Proud of you, Dave. Thanks. I'm, uh, I really yeah. am, man. Yeah. I'm, uh, it's a heck of a thing. It, it was crazy. Every emotion or thought I could probably have rushed through my head in a 30-second window, but I'm glad to know that I have that in me to be able to do that if need be. Well, I can say one thing. It's day four, and I'm pretty sure I'm not allergic to quail, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm ready to eat, man. Time to start field dressing. Who's never field dressed a quail before? Dave, you probably never have. Nope. You want to participate in field dressing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's really easy. You're just taking feathers, just pulling them kind of against the grain. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be all you, dude. <laughs> You're done with that? Yeah. You know, I knew it was gonna be pretty gross, but it's very real. I don't have a problem with people hunting and killing and trapping, that sort of thing but it was just different when it's in your own hand. The meat in the grocery store has just took on a whole new meaning. Well, guys, now we just need to put it on the Barbie and wait for it to finish cooking. I think he's cooked. Let's just make sure it's done. Oh, look yeah, at that. It's yeah, it done, baby. Bill? Yes, sir. You first, I've been buddy. waiting for this, man. Man, that right there is the stuff, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Mm. You got mint, dude. That's good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Normally, when I talk about eating a chicken leg, though, it's not that size. <laughs> <laughs> you got the drumstick, man. <laughs> man, guys, this is the perfect boost you needed before going into solo day tomorrow. You know, you guys are going to need all the energy you can muster. Your solo day is all about shelter and fire, getting yourself set up so that you can get through a cold and potentially rainy night. But tonight, we bask in the glory of the <laughs> fruit of our labor and yeah. get a good night's sleep. Good job today, guys. Boy, it's a soggy morning this morning, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's cold. It is cold. Today, these guys go alone. They can't rely on each other, and they can't rely on me to get the job done. Guys, I got to tell you, man, worst case scenario for building a solo shelter and making a solo fire today, everything is just completely saturated. Obviously, if our first day was like today, there would be no handrail. It's just too wet. I've cut off some low-hanging pine branches. And at that joint where the pine connects to the tree, a lot of times it's rich with resin, which is incredibly flammable. You're literally gonna light this torch in the fire and you're gonna carry a torch to your base camp. Good luck, fellas. Good man. See you on the other side, man. See you tomorrow. I'll be by a little bit later on to check on you. Man, keep that fire going. It's the hardest part of this whole process. You never know when you might need to make an unexpected gear repair in the field. So I'm going to show you how to make a really quick natural glue using black charred wood and pine sap. You can find these pine nodules on almost any sap tree. I'm just gonna get those melting into a nice pool of melted pine sap. While those are melting, I'm gonna grind down some of this charcoal into a powder. We're gonna mix some of this crushed charcoal with this melted pine sap. It needs to feel really syrupy. And the combination of those two makes one of the strongest epoxies that you'll ever find. It's my work. Thinking I could build a roof over this right here. 
All right, now I've got to get some squall wood going here so I can get this fire started before I lose that because I know uh, time is of the essence. Exhausted, hungry, tired, cold, wet. And to ice that off, you get whipped in the face with a nice, wet, cold branch. Really kind of test your patience. It's real. It's real out here. This looks like a pretty good place. I don't have much time. I gotta work quick. The fire's going out. There we go. I think this is just gonna have to work for the night. It's got a little bit more of a hill than I like. Get this going before I lose my flame, which I just lost. No sooner I pick a spot of where I'm going to set a shelter so I can start building the fire, my torch goes out. I tried to sit there and blow it, and uh, there's no way it was coming back. So I'm thinking, great, this is just what I need. Nope. Get this going before I lose my flame, which I just lost. With temperatures in the teens approaching, fire is a necessity. These guys have to be resourceful on their solo night. Pulled some pine bark resin off a tree earlier. Maybe I can get this to catch flame. Nope, looks like all I'm gonna do is melt. But a long trek back to base camp may be the only option to start a fire in these wet woods. Back to base camp, try and get another fire. A moment of truth. There you go. You going? I think we might be in business here. So it's roof time now. Luckily, I've already got two the walls up. I'm lighting both these bad boys this time. Flames don't stop now. I'm gonna keep a lean to that way and put some. Rails down the other side to block that low wind, so I'm gonna lay right here. So I think I'm gonna get ready on the shelter. Creek. Dave, the army of one. <laughs> so what do you think of the homestead, man? It looks cozy. I can't imagine it won't serve you well. It looks like a pretty good design. It looks pretty solid. Well, you feel like you're tapping into that military guy? You know, <laughs> coming out here was a reminder of who I once was, but, you know, helps me gain more appreciation for what I have today and who I am today and that I don't have to work this hard to survive and succeed. All right, buddy. Good Thanks, luck man. tonight. Do you do build your shelter in Stonehenge or hey. what, man? Yeah. Got lucky. This is like cave style, man. Yeah. Low and tight and warm. I like this. I walked into Andrew's solo base camp and I could immediately tell a temperature difference. I feel the heat kind of popping off these rocks. It's gonna be really cold tonight, but I think this setup is gonna keep Andrew pretty comfortable tonight. So man, I know you got a crazy life back at home and a big part of you coming out here has been to kind of just take a step back and hit the reset button a little bit. This is your day for it, man. All right. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Well, dang, don't you look all cozy. Yeah, well, that's just because I can't get out cozy. <laughs> looks like everything's working out, though, man. I mean, it looks like you got a really nice setup. I'm wanting to eventually get to where I live off the grid, but uh, one thing I learned out here is I do not want to have a pioneer lifestyle, but a lot of the things I learned out here I can definitely take with me. I mean, my boys and I love to camp, and I'll love to show them a lot of the skills I've learned while I've been out here. Well, I'll tell you what, man, great job with this setup. You're gonna, you're gonna be okay tonight, man. Well, it's our last night at Solo Night. Coldest night of the entire week. I can't think of the last time I had a quiet night. It's kind of weird getting used to. You know, getting out here to the woods has definitely been great for me. Think about how all of this can wake you up to realize, man, you still got something left in you. Yeah, definitely miss the family. It's definitely going to be a long, cold night ahead. I think some good changes are coming for me and all around a great experience. I'd have stayed out Ooh. tonight too if I'd have had to. Just the benefit is much more than I would have ever thought. All right, well, here we go. 
I will miss the peacefulness. It's been peaceful out here. This is the first time I've been completely unplugged. I don't know how long, you know, but it's been enjoyable. I'm gonna be sore today. It, it definitely was everything I came here wanting to find. You know, I came out here and nothing was given to me. I had to go out and get everything for myself. Morning, sunshine. Well, there he is. Man, my butt cheeks are so frozen right now, I feel like <laughs> I'm sporting two Christmas hams in the back of these bibs. <laughs> Morning, fellas. What you say, big man? Hey, Andrew, how you doing, brother? It's good to see signs of life. Morning, fellas. How'd you do? How Morning, buddy. Well, it's cold, man. Well, I'll tell you what, fellas. You have survived a brutal week. Bill, even though you have that leadership type A personality. Forget all y'all's little traps gonna catch a bird. I'm catching a damn pig. You kind of took the back seat in a couple of areas this week. You did a good job, Dave. It was just a really great experience having you in the woods. Well, it was definitely a learning experience for me regardless. You know, Andrew, you came out here just kind of wanting to unplug a little bit. I mean, hands down, you had the best solo base camp of everybody. It was a lot of fun. Well, you did a great job this week, man. It's Thank a pleasure you. being in the woods with you. Absolute pleasure as well. Thank you. Then there's Dave. You came in this week, the old guy. And I know in your head, you felt like you had the most to prove. It's so clear to us that you're the soldier. Military line of sight. You know, Absolutely. and you're not the desk guy. I Absolutely. mean, it's just like, it's hard to imagine that you even have that internal battle going on, you know? And so I actually have a gift for you. I'm gonna give you the same exact wow. knife rig oh, that I use myself. Thanks, man. You're welcome. It means a lot to me. You can set that knife on your desk, but I'll tell you, that knife's gonna be kinda like you. It's gonna be happiest when you take it out in the woods with you. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm ready to get out of here. Lead me to the food, brother. <laughs> the food. Let's do it. In modern society, it's easy for guys to question whether or not they are as manly as the pioneer settlers that built this country. This week, these guys survived in the middle of the wilderness with next to nothing, and they've come out stronger and more manly because of it. This week, these guys did our pioneer settlers proud.